So you're working away in ClickSense, and you finally get to the point where you say, doggone it, there's just no objects that do what I need to do. I need to do something special. I want to play a video from YouTube in my app for help. I want to be able to do alternate states like people can do in ClickView. But where can you get those things? Well, Nana Nana Doo Doo, I've got a whole bunch of custom objects or extensions installed that I get to work with. But how does poor little old you get to those objects? Well, you can get to those from branch.click.com. If you just go to that website, it's going to bring up a whole bunch of projects that you could download absolutely for free to use. You're going to get started by simply clicking projects. I'm going to filter for just click sense since that's what we're looking for. And the first type of project I'm looking for is alternate states. Okay. And as I filter, you can see I've got three different objects. I've got alternate states, which adds or removes those alternate states. I'm going to want to get that one. I've got an object that sets the state for an object. So it ties and says, hey, this bar chart or this list box is associated with this particular alternate states. And I can also do um, button type things that would set actions for those. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to start downloading this first one, which is add or remove those alternate states. I'm going to click on that object. And to add or remove this, it kind of gives you an example of what you're going to do so you'll understand how to use that. I'm going to click on this where it says add or remove it. And it's going to take me to some projects. I've got this alternate states. I'm going to download this. I can open it or I can download it. If I download that zip file, you'll see it's just like any other type of download. It's going to do this. And it's going to start putting these downloads in my downloads folder. So I'm going to go ahead and back out of that because I also want this alternate states aware list box. And so I say download that. Now I'll have both of those out there. We'll get to this downloads directory in a minute. I'm going to back out of there. I'm going to come back to here. Um, where I kind of got started. I want to go back to this. I also want these actions. The actions for this, these are developed by someone else. These actions um, allow you to have buttons where you can say, I want to clear state one, but I want to leave state two alone. So I'm going to go ahead and go to this one. I'm going to again click to here and say, yes, I want to download that. I say, I want to download that zip file. And we can start cleaning up these tabs that are left open. I want to go ahead and get a few other objects while I'm there. So the, the ones I'm doing are probably the most, most popular five that get used. I want to do this YouTube search. And you'll see I can either get an HTML box that you could put any type of a website in. Or I'm going to get this YouTube player that's specifically for playing YouTube videos. No, I don't expect people to have music playing in the background, but I believe a YouTube box is a perfect way for you to shoot help videos that you embed right into your applications. Users could then have a choice. Hey, do you want to see me explain the data and where it came from? Do you want to see me show you how to use the application? You get started, you filter to this, you go to this tab to do this etc. So you can use it as a metadata explanation for people. You can use it as help um, on how to just use click basics or you can do application specific help and embed it right in a video. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this one. Again, each time it comes up there will be some type of an ex explanation of what this is going to be. I'm going to click on this so it'll take me to this page um, from Joe Warbington who's part of the click team. I'm going to say download that. And you'll see, regardless of the extension type, it's all a pretty similar pattern here. I'm going to go ahead and close that screen up again. Now I'm going to go ahead and look for KPIs. I like to do KPIs a little bit differently than what comes out of the box. And you'll see there's a simple KPI, and it kind of shows you what it would look like, or a dual gauge that would show you um, an image and have some percentages. 
The nice thing about this gauge is it will wrap itself around if you end up going um, beyond 100%. Um, so that's kind of a nice feature. Um, if I search for KPI, I could also use a gauge, a themable KPI. We're going to choose this simple KPI. This one has, has quite a few um, benefits. So again, it's going to show this object, who the author was. I'm going to click it, tell it to download. Again, regardless of the object, pretty simple interface for choosing these things. I'm going to come back to here. And now what I'm going to look for is actions. I like to do some actions with some buttons. I want to have a button that says go to this sheet. I want to have a button that might clear some filters. And so this sheet navigation and actions, this is the one I'm looking for. And so I'm going to say give me this. I'm going to say take me to here. It shows me what I can do in terms of some of these buttons. I'm going to say yes, I'd like to take that. I'm going to say download it. And so at this point, we now have four things that we'd like to do. I'm looking for one more. I'm looking for a way I can play with some variables. This QS variable is a very neat extension. It lets me be able to set some buttons to set variable values. I can have a text box so that you could just type in and you can play with some what-if scenarios. You can use it as a slider. Or you can use it as a pick list. Um, so some various ways that you can set values for variables that you're going to use. And that's a nice feature. So I'm going to go ahead and tell it to download that object as well. So at this point, I've used um, Click Branch to simply access these five key extensions that I'd like to use. Now we have the objects loaded in terms of a zip file on our drive. We can do one of two things. If we're going to install these to Sense Desktop, all we need to do is open up the object that we're going to use. So say I want to take this this navigation object. I need to unzip it, and I just copy that folder right into my um, Sense Extensions directory. That is located for you as a user under the user's your initials, not mine, Documents, Click, Sense, Extensions. And all we're going to do is simply open up the zip file and copy the directory that is there to each of them. And you'll see I've already done the simple KPI, so I don't need that one. I could take this YouTube and I simply, again, unzip it so that it's a folder and I can copy it over and I'm going to replace the one that's there. So I just replaced the one that was there so I made sure I had the latest version and I would do that for each of my six different extensions that I've now added. If I want to add those to Sent server the process is just slightly different which is the reason I kept them in the zip. In QMC, you can go to Extensions, and you just go um, right off the root, and you simply say, I'd like to import an extension. And the reason I kept them in a zip file is because for Sense Server, you need the actual um, object. So if I wanted to take that YouTube one, I would simply say I want to open that and import it. And more often than not, it's going to say everything imported fine, and you can see YouTube shows up there, uh, and that was good. Now I'm going to go ahead and get another one. I want to show you one of the things that's just a little bit quirky, so you'll be aware of it. When I take this navigation object, for instance, I'm going to open that, and when I do the import, it's actually going to import it, but it's going to tell me there's, there's an error. One of the things about it that's just a little bit quirky is in some of these objects with these zip files, inside there's a few files that cannot be imported, that the extensions are just bad. And these are usually things that the, that the developers use for documentation for themselves or to share with others. Um, but those extensions cannot be loaded into um, sent server. So the object itself is fine, and I'll show you this one in a second. Um, but you may get that error, so just double check. As long as the thing shows up here, that extension has been installed. 
Now to use these extensions, they're just like other objects. If I'm in a Sense application, I'm going to go into this demo app, and I want to start now using this um, new navigation object. I'm just going to go to an empty sheet. If you are in 2.2 two or, or below, you're going to have your objects in a list just like all the other objects. In 3.0, as I showed you, those objects are separated into the canned click objects versus your extension objects. But now if I walk down through here, I'll see I have a sheet navigation in action, and that's the what we had just installed. And you'll see that you've got a couple of um, options for this. I can have um, show, I can have a layout, I can say, hey, I want my button to be the full width of the size of the screen. I can choose a little icon for it if I want to. Um, and then I can set some behavior for these buttons. And I can say, I'd like this to go to the next sheet. And maybe that's what I want for that button. Or I can say, hey, there really is no navigation action. It's not a navigation button. Instead, I want you to do some other actions for me. And I'm going to enable the action. I'm going to say, when I press this button, what I want you to do is clear all of the selections. And so what that's going to do then is just um, like I could normally do within click, I can clear it. But now I'm going to have a nice big button that's going to say to do that. And I'm going to set the label for this to be clear all current selections. And now if I were to press that button, if I had any filters um, done, it, this button would now clear those. So let me see if I've got any data. I'm going to go ahead and pick some silly data, close this up, and now if this works as expected, it should clear those selections. And there's a number of other actions we can take. I also want to go ahead and bring in the YouTube video that we downloaded. And so all this does, this simply takes a YouTube ID. I can put any ID in here. And this is where um, we can embed our local help. Um, click play if you want to see help. And your help that you might want to embed into the video um, might be specific to click. It might be um, how to navigate within the application to get to different components that you're looking for, how to drill down on things. It could be metadata explanations. Fiscal year is what we use in this, in this application. Um, the patient IDs come from such and such other, other EHR application and so forth. So these extensions are things that you can use um, because you want to visualize, they could be because you have needs for your application. I want buttons to set values. I want to make selections based on clicking things. Um, I want to embed help. And the ones that I gave you, I want to create alternate states. Um, I, I want a different type of a KPI that has a, has a nice look, has a nice icon with it. Um, or I want to be able to set variables and have you use slider controls to set those things. So all great objects. Hopefully you got the, the hang of how to download and install those things now.